Hello, everybody. My name is Graham Elwood, and you are watching The Political Vigilante. So if you guys follow crypto like I do, you saw all this crazy shit that happened with FTX. So this is the this is from Coindesk, and I just wanted to read this, this article because it's, it's going to spark a massive regulatory response, which could be good or bad. I mean, if they overregulate it, that could be bad. In the long run, it could be good because what we need for Bitcoin specifically, but other cryptos to, to skyrocket is mass adoption. When people hear about exchanges going closed and people losing their crypto, that terrifies people from buying in. So more regulation that prevents this will make people go, oh, it's safe. I can buy in now. Um, Lawmakers, regulators, and criminal investigators looking into FTX's collapse and Sam Bankman-Fried's tweets aren't helping. Yeah, this kid, and this is the this is the problem of some of these young crypto billionaires. They think this is like some high school game, and then they're on Twitter talking shit. And you, well, now you have given evidence. <laughs> You're messing with people's livelihoods, and the FBI, FBI and the SEC are going to get involved. You're going to, you could go to jail. But, um. A hammer is going to fall on crypto exchange FTX. The question is how heavy it might be. The collapse of FTX will likely give rise to a number of criminal and civil actions against the exchange and its executives, like former FTX CEO Sam Bankman-Fried. It also likely to push forward actual regulatory changes, either via lawmakers or through federal agencies themselves, a number of individuals told Coindesk. FTX filed for bankruptcy last Friday, days after halting withdrawals and a little over a week after Coindesk first reported that the balance sheet of FTX sister company, Alameda Research, held a surprisingly large amount of FTT, an exchange token issued by FTX. Oh, that sounds like insider trading. <laughs> FTX was fine, Bankman Fred said in response to questions about his exchange solvency before a series of events showed otherwise. As a result, several state and federal agencies launched or expanded investigations into the company, including the U.S. Department of Justice. Well, you don't want those guys crawling up your ass. That's bad news. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, they're a little bit of a toothless tiger, but the Securities Commission of the Bahamas and the Bahamas Financial Crimes Investigative Branch. Members of the U.S. Congress from both political parties are calling for further action as a result of the collapse. Some lawmakers are even talking about holding hearings potentially by the end of the year. So if this guy really goes to jail, it'll be because he hurt institutional banks' money. If regular Americans get screwed, eh, whatever. But the DOJ and Congress don't step to and tell their donors, go, hey, I lost $100 million. I want this kid locked up. <laughs> Representative Brad Sherman, a Democrat from California, member of the House Financial Services Committee, said in a statement that the collapse is a dramatic demonstration of both the inherent risk of digital assets and the critical weaknesses in the industry that has grown around them. Yeah. Uh, Banking Committee Chair, a Democrat, Sherrod Brown, and Elizabeth Warren, oh, she's great, are among those in Congress calling for investigations into the collapse, as well as Sam Bankman Fried, who was a major party donor. <laughs> oh, Sam Brakeman Fee donated to the Democratic Party? Well, maybe they'll go easy on him. Unless the money they lost was more than his donation, well, then they'll just go, sorry, you're going to pay the difference in, in fines and, and jail time. <laughs> oh, God. Um. The outgoing ranking member on the Senate Banking Committee said it was regulatory ambiguity in the U.S. that allowed FTX to grow as large as it had as an offshore exchange. Oh. They called for Congress or regulatory agencies to provide cleaner guidelines for crypto exchanges to operate. The fact that the American federal government, by and large, in my opinion, doesn't understand what crypto and Bitcoin is. The, the hedge funds and the and institutional money are really starting to understand what they are. That's why they keep putting money into it. And when this recession gets worse and we go into full financial collapse, then they'll be dumping even more money into Bitcoin. Um, uh, investigations, according to attorney who requested anonymity, the SEC may have an easier time kicking off the investigation just due to its mandate. 
the SEC is in a much better position to go to court and get a freeze on assets if they believe there's a reason to do that. The SEC also has less cumbersome process for subpoenaing testimony and freezing documents. Again, if they bring in more regulation, all this means is if you buy crypto, get it onto a cold wallet, like all that, it's just more of that evidence. More regulation, if that brings in more adoption, then it'll send the crypto prices, specifically Bitcoin, through the roof. Um, the bankruptcy court has the ability to now oversee the company and to obtain information from the company that, let's say the DOJ might not have been able to obtain as easily pre-bankruptcy, and they'll likely have access to new trustee or an examiner and be able to learn in essentially real time what's going on, the former prosecutor said. Executives like Bankman Freed may also be in a tough spot with respect to deciding whether to cooperate or assert fifth amendment rights against self-incrimination. Oh God, if he pleads the fifth, yeah, what a piece of shit. On November 7th, a few days after Coindesk first reported on Alameda's balance sheet, the one-time crypto wonder kid tweeted that FTX has enough to cover all client holdings. Bullshit. This is why I don't, I, I just get your money off the exchanges and these altcoins, there's some dumb, this is just like the dot-com boom. And what happened during the dot-com boom? A bunch of companies made crazy money overnight. There was all this corruption and insider training and a bunch of them went belly up and people lost fortunes. And a handful of them came out from it. Assets are fine, he said. Later in the week, he tweeted that FTX US was also fine and fully liquid. Only hours later, FTX US warned users it might suspend withdrawals. Within a day, Bankman Fried agreed to a buyout bailout of his reeling exchange by rival Binance. Binance walked away from the deal less than 24 hours later, precipitating the bankruptcy filing. So Binance knew it was a rotten deal. The tweets were deleted after that. It's a corporate, it's a complete nightmare, said Ken White, a former federal prosecutor and partner at the Brown, White, and Osborne law firm. This is a situation where all sorts of agencies are going to be looking at this. The SEC, the FTC, and probably the Department of Justice, there are all sorts of potential criminal and civil consequences, lawsuits. Well, what this kid can get in trouble with, this bankman freed idiot, is the assets are fine. So you knowingly lied to the, to the public and to your investors and to your people who are holding their assets with you? Yeah, see, Twitter is not, it's not talking at a bar, you dumbasses. Um, the former FTX CEO's conduct is going to be under a microscope and seems likely that some of Bankman Fried's tweets may come back to haunt him as litigation works its way through the courts. Yeah, now you have hard evidence of you lying. It's like dumbass Alex Jones. You want to say people are, there's lizard aliens or whatever. You want to say these shootings are or use crisis actors. Okay. It's crazy bullshit. You're just saying it to, to, cause you know, crazy stuff on Twitter, on YouTube, especially that gets YouTube clicks saying crazy outlandish stuff gets clicks. He knows that that's why he was making whatever he was making $80,000 a day or whatever. But then when you tell people to go hassle a parent whose child was killed in a mass shooting, you're a detestable piece of shit, but you've also just broken a law. And then he, he perjured himself in open court. Yeah, you're not on your YouTube show where you can just say crazy shit and you're never held accountable. So now he's opened himself up to crim criminal prosecution. So I hope Alex Jones spends the less of his bald, dumb, shitty life in jail. And I hope this FTX asshole goes to jail. Um, it creates a new basis for criminal or civil claims against him just based on those tweets. So if he says that everything's fine, that their assets are real assets, and that's not true, then he can then that can be securities fraud and wire fraud, all sorts of other stuff, not to mention all sorts of civil cases of action. It's just disastrously reckless. Investigators may look at what Bankman Fried's tweets would indicate to individual investors, as well as what FTX's representations were. And while it is entirely possible that Bankman Fried may have believed that exchange was safe and stable before being proven wrong by unanticipated events, it's also possible that he tweeted inaccurate information. Again, everything's time stamped. So if there's some internal email where he's like, oh, we're screwed. And then after that tweets out, we're fine. 
Sorry, liar. Um, that this will also, if bankruptcy was transferring user funds into Alameda and losing those investments, that may become a liability. <laughs> yeah. That's the other thing. If he's like, everything is fine. And then he's like transferring money and, and jumping ship like a rat on a pirate ship going down rat. Um, <laughs> even the money is good. Sometimes you just don't, as a lawyer, he said, you don't want to be attached to someone who's deciding to self emoliate. Oh man. So there it is, folks. That guy. Oh boy. Did he screw up hard? So this is why on the crypto lounge I've been saying, guys, get your money off the exchanges, put it into a cold wallet. And this is why I I was looking at more altcoins before the interview with Max Kaiser, I'll be honest with you. After that interview, I changed my whole strategy to just acquire more Bitcoin because it's going to be the dominant one and it can't be, you know, it doesn't have a CEO and all this stuff. And then I'm just going to sit on these altcoins. I'm not going to buy any more altcoins and I'm just going to wait until we go back into a bull market. And when any of these altcoins spike hit a certain number, I'm going to pull out my initial investment plus a 20 to 30% profit. and cash out of the altcoin game because it just seems corrupt, very, very corrupt, and just stick with Bitcoin and real estate because <laughs> those two things don't go away. It's like gold. <laughs> Follow the money, connect the dots, get the truth, and shave your knuckles for justice. Boom. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. We are still in our like ninth month of demonetization from YouTube. So support what we're doing at patreon.com slash Graham Elwood or rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood, which is a blockchain cryptocurrency platform. It's free to sign up and there's a premium level at $10 a month. And for that, you get everybody on the platform's premium content. Myself, Lee Camp, Ron Placone, Jimmy Dore, Whitney Webb, Kim Iverson, Abby Martin, and many, many others. You can also support what we're doing at Venmo at Graham-Elwood and go to GrahamElwood.com. We have a PayPal button and a PO box. I also have crypto wallets, which are all in the show notes. Thanks for supporting what we do.